The lightweight division has evolved drastically during Ryan Garcia's previous 15-month absence, and the 23-year-old has some catching up to do. King Rai, the social media monarch and self-proclaimed boxing influencer, took a mental break from the sport after persistent bouts of depression and anxiety. He never really experienced anxiety, and then out of nowhere, well, it hits me. I'm starting to have panic attacks. I'm starting to, I'm starting to have weird dreams. I'm starting to feel weird. Like anxiety makes you feel weird. It makes you feel things that are just not normal. Hard to explain. Like sometimes you can feel dizzy. Sometimes you could feel out of the loop. Sometimes you could feel like you're in a dream. Sometimes you could feel unsure. And sometimes you could feel like you're about to die. Outwardly, he seemed like an unlikely mental health advocate. But the youngster believes the trappings of his early fame may have played a part. Garcia collapsed at a San Diego gym in the spring of last year in front of his old trainer, Eddie Reynoso, and decided some time off was needed. He sought professional help and says regular therapy got him back on his feet. But the boxing world didn't stop spinning, of course. After defeating Luke Campbell, the Californian was tagged as a member of the new Four Kings, alongside Devin Haney, Gervonta Davis, and Teofimo Lopez. However, things have changed. Lopez was shocked by George Cambosos in November. But then, Cambosos went on to lose to Haney by a shutout unanimous decision in Australia. And after 12 rounds, we go to the scorecards. Zoltan and Yeti and Ben Wahlo so both scored it. 116 to 112. Pavo Sardinia closes. 118 to 110. All three judges have it for the winner by unanimous decision. Devin the Dream Haney! For his part, Garcia remains in the top five despite a lack of action and was keen to show he was revived by his break. But he was forced to go the distance against negative Emmanuel Tago. Garcia showed no respect for Tago, marching him into every corner and attempting to land hard rights and left hooks with his signature hand speed. He towered over the Ghanaian and essentially did what he wanted. I think that left hook caught the attention of Tego. It came so fast. The speed is what catches you off guard. It's a mix of speed and power. There it is again. Garcia made a breakthrough in the second round when he dropped Tago midway through the round. And that's what Ryan Garcia's going to need to knock down Tago. That right hand. Rounds came and went in a similar fashion, with Garcia coming up with almost every shot as he searched for the finish that would capture the attention of his millions of Instagram followers. But Tago weathered the early rush and started landing some decent shots on the counter in his seventh and eighth. He didn't win any rounds, however, as he was unwilling to stand, act, and present Garcia with a ready-made opening. Although Garcia fashioned one himself in the 10th and seemed poised to end the show after a crushing right hand early in the round. And the game boy in serious trouble, trying to hang on for dear life. Tango doing the veteran thing by holding on. By any means up there. That could have easily been scored a knockdown. Expect him to hold on again. He is damaged good. But again, Tago survived, and in doing so, Garcia would see the 11th and 12th round for the very first time in his professional career. So his first fight since January of 2021, a complete domination. He didn't get the knockout that he wanted or predicted, but he did get the win, and he's back on track and will improve to 22 and 0. Regardless, the judges called Garcia the winner by wide scorecards, even if that wasn't quite the return he envisioned against a hand-picked opponent in Taco. After such a lengthy layoff, it was only natural that Garcia took a lighter touch for his comeback. But now that the cobwebs are off, Ryan and his team knows he needs an opponent with a little more pedigree. And after an Isaac Cruz fight fell through, Ryan has instead opted to fight an opponent he has a prior history with. Lightweight contender, Javier Fortuna is next. While some skeptics will be arguing that the American should be facing off against a bigger name, Fortuna is perhaps the toughest assignment of Garcia's career. Even if Fortuna isn't on the level of the elites, he's a top 10 lightweight. Hey! 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 
Cotto, and this time there's no play acting involved. Six! Seven! Yeah, I'm not sure he's going to make it. Nine! It's over. Just like that. One punch. We said he had one punch ability. And that was clean and perfect. And in essence, the 33-year-old Dominican boxer shapes up as a second world-class opponent in three fights for Garcia after a seventh-round TKO of Luke Campbell in January 2021. Fortuna possesses a powerful left hand and an aggressive, free-swinging style. If there is a criticism of this fight, though, it would be that Fortuna is coming off a close but clear decision defeat to Joseph Jojo Diaz back in July of last year. However, Fortuna bounced back in February with a stay-busy first-round KO and now lands the fight he's been lobbying for. This could also be a little bit of shrewd matchmaking from Golden Boy Promotions to prepare Ryan Garcia for a much bigger fight down the line. Fortuna isn't the biggest of lightweights, but is an explosive southpaw. Remind you of anyone? Yes, Gervonta is levels above Fortuna, and Tank might very well be the best lightweight in the world. But at the very least, there seems to be a method to choosing Fortuna. Garcia and Tank have repeatedly expressed interest in fighting one another. Two Tank. rounds, baby, two rounds. Two rounds, I don't care, you're on pause, two rounds. In fact, Ryan has openly stated that after Fortuna, he wants Tank in December. And with Tank's contract running out with Mayweather Promotions, he's now free to cross the other side of the street and make one of the biggest fights in boxing. And perhaps Golden Boy knows that and has opted for a short and explosive southpaw in Fortuna for that very reason. It remains to be seen. One thing is for certain, Fortuna views the Garcia fight as being personal. That's because the Dominican Republic native was initially slated to take on Garcia last year. However, two weeks after their bout was announced, the 23-year-old social media sensation abruptly withdrew to focus on his mental health. Days later, Garcia was seen in Hawaii and was back to training approximately two weeks after, teasing a possible ring return, which would eventually fall through due to a hand injury. Either way, if there was any doubt about Garcia being hesitant to fight Fortuna a year ago, that will all be made clear after the fight. And with Garcia seemingly destined for superstardom, he has to defeat guys like Fortuna. But Javier alongside having good power is no slouch. And inside the ring, anything can happen. So, will Fortuna manage to derail the Garcia hype train? Or will King Rai continue his rapid ascension as one of boxing's biggest young stars? We'll find out on July 16th.